All right, so he threw his hat in the the presidential ring, and I got to tell you something. He has taken the election cycle by storm. His political agenda would fundamentally reshape America, but in this case, it would reshape America back to its roots, to its ethos that propelled us to greatness in the first place. I want to bring in 2024 presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. You know, Vivek uh, 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 um, Eisenhower, his farewell address warned of the unwarranted influence of the military-industrial complex, and you're warning about this new woke industrial complex. Explain that. So look, I think there's a merger, Charles, of private power and state power to together do now what neither can do on its own. That's what the ESG movement is all about. That's actually a lot of what so-called big tech censorship is all about. It's not big tech censorship. It's government tech censorship where government is deputizing private companies to do through the back door what government could not get done through the front door under the Constitution. That's why I've said as U.S. president, one of my first executive orders will be to say that any time there's a government bureaucrat who has pressured a private company to take an action that the government couldn't take directly, we will publish that and disclose it because you have to see the problem in order to solve it. We're also going to go the distance and solve it as well. You know, right now in this country, morale is just sinking like a rock. And I think that's one of the keys, right? If you're going to implement any sort of great idea yep. and you want it to come to fruition, we've got to first find a way to convince folks that there can be, you know, to coin a phrase, morning in America again. How do you go about that? Exactly. So, look, I think we have to revive civic pride in the next generation. I'm the first millennial ever to run for U.S. president as a Republican. As a young person, I feel some responsibility. We are all hungry for a cause. We're hungry for purpose and meaning and identity. That's the vacuum at the heart of our soul. So wokeness or gender ideology or the climate cult, that'll fill the void. But what we need to do for the next generation, Charles, is fill that void of identity with the vision of American national identity that runs so deep that it dilutes the woke agenda to irrelevance. So last night, I'm I'm advancing some bold proposals to do this. I unveiled my support last night here in Iowa for a constitutional amendment. That would actually raise the voting age from 18 to 25, but still say you can vote at age 18 if you either serve the country in the military or as a first responder for six months or else pass the civics test that we require immigrants to pass in order to become naturalized citizens. Young people don't value a country they inherit. They can value a country that we all have a stake in building. So we're thinking ambitiously, Charles, but you're right. That's what the whole ball game's about. Revive our national spirit, national pride, that shining city on a hill that Reagan talked about. I still think we can be that, yeah. but it's going to take all of us to get there. I love the way you've thought that through, by the way. I really, really do. And, so, you know, we have a woman who's worked for us, and two years ago she became an American citizen. And you look at what they have to know. You doubt that most Americans could pass that, that exam. And maybe that's why we don't embrace it. We don't get just how great we are and, and how great we can be. So let's talk about ESG. It's something I've talked about for a long time. I was thrilled to hear when you started talking about it. Uh, you know, but I keep reading that it's taking these lumps that has fallen apart. And yet, then the next day I'll read, another $20 billion has been raised, right? I feel like these governments, uh, the Biden administration included, they're just so set on you know, going after things like gas stoves that if you're an investor, for instance, you almost have to put money into it, right? You've got to put money into an EV if the governments around the world are going to make you only drive EVs. How do we break that? Because they're, making it to, they're taking it to a point where you've got to participate. You're hitting the nail on the head. They will tell you that, oh, this is just the free market. That is wrong. This is not the invisible hand of the free market. This is the invisible fist of government. I'll give you examples. Take CalPERS or the New York State Pension Funds. CalPERS is the California Pension Fund. They say to asset managers that you can't manage our money unless you adopt these environmental and social mandates for your portfolio companies. Let's take President Biden passed a new rule changing the Department of Labor's standards now to say that if you're a retirement fund manager, your job isn't just to make money, but that you can take into account what they call collateral benefits other than investment return. Here's the worst part about that Biden ESG rule last year, Charles, is that they also want to hide it from you. Mm -hmm. The draft rule that Biden put up had a disclosure requirement. It said that you had to tell retirees if you were doing this. By the time they passed the final rule, they took the disclosure requirement out because they said it would have a chilling effect on ESG factors. So that tells you what's going on. Mm -hmm. The deception and the non-transparency are intentional. They're baked in. And one of the areas, I just got a minute to go, but let's get this in because I think it's critical. 
Uh, one of the central parts of this whole ESG movement is really just the climate change. I mean, I think that's really this whole thing is just desi des designed to power that yeah. sort of climate uh, cult that you call. And you've been talking about nuclear power. What's amazing about that, if you look at polls, they're, they're, they're overwhelming majority of Americans think, yeah, that would be great. So we, we know it would be great. Uh, you got 77 percent of Americans who favor it. Uh, why can't we get to that? Well, see, here's what's going on. I favor drilling, fracking, burning coal. I say so unapologetically. I will abandon the climate cult as president, eliminate the measurement of carbon emissions in the federal government. But nuclear energy is the best known form of carbon free energy production known to mankind. And yet many in the climate movement are against that, too. The reason is it's really an anti-growth mm. agenda, Charles. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with the climate and everything to do with power, dominion and control. So I'm embracing nuclear energy, too, and calling the other side's bluff. Well, I'm glad you are, and keep up the good work, my friend. I'm glad you took time out to be on this show today. Good luck. Thank you. I appreciate see, it, Charles. See you soon.